In today's Long Kid episode, we are talking grub worms and how you can prevent them throughout the feeding season. By the way, it's just beautiful to sit around on a Friday night and just shoot video on your lawn. It really is. It's rewarding. Oh, Kentucky Blue, I love you. What's up guys, I'm Jake the Long Kid. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. Today's video mainly centers around these guys right here. So what we got here is we got some grub control going down today, right? We got Old Fashioned 7 down. And at the same time, we're applying the Lorganite at 10 pounds per thousand. Before we dive right into the action of applying the fertilizer, there's a few common questions I want to go ahead and answer. First one being, when do you want to apply grub preventer? It's very often that there's a lot of these misconceptions that you want to apply grub worm preventative in May. And that's mainly when the grubs are going to start doing most of their feeding. Typically, you guys would be expecting to see damage there, but because we're in the springtime, we're getting a lot of excess sunlight and a lot of excess rain, and because of that, your lawn is growing so vigorous in the spring that it pretty much outgrows any damage that those guys would leave behind. And you guys know me, I practice IPM, Integrated Pest Management. I addressed it in last week's video. By the way, if you want to check that out, I'll leave it in the description below. Basically, what Integrated Pest Management means is that I don't use any chemical means to treat a pest unless it affects the overall use and appearance of my crop, which in this case is turf grass. So if I don't see any damage, I just let them go. And that's what I recommend all you guys do. Let me tell you why. When it comes to using an insecticide, a typical granular bag will tell you its maximum control duration. For example, a bag of Scott's Grub X says it'll provide four months of coverage until it is no longer effective. Same thing on this Bayer Advanced product, but it'll only provide three months of coverage. If we're only getting a minimal coverage of only three months, then we need to apply at the right time in order to ensure we have proper coverage when the grubs are causing most of their damage, which is typically the June, July, August time frame. You see, because as we come into summer, you guys happen to know this. Any of you guys who live in an area like I do, like Northwest Indiana, you guys happen to know that our summers are almost bone dry or close to it. And because of that, the lawns are going to be going through summer dormancy. And basically what that means is that they're not going to have a defense mechanism against diseases such as grubs. And you guys happen to know that the way the life cycle works is that the grubs emerge as June bugs in June and they drop their eggs in the lawn, which is basically their larva, and their larva is going to start feeding on the lawn roots and because your lawn is in dormancy it's not going to have a defense mechanism against that and because of that you're going to start noticing damage as we move on to the late fall. Typically the problem you're going to have in late fall is it's mainly going to be brown spots in your lawn and at that point it's too late to apply any grub preventer and at that point you're just going to have to do reseeding next spring. Now hold on just a second there Sullivan. What about those who have missed their grub preventatives? For those of you just get what whatever's at the store that will kill within 24 hours, also called a curative product. It won't repair the existing damage, but it will prevent further more damage from occurring. Now this brings me to another question I know I'm going to get. Jake, what is the best grub preventer to buy for your lawn? Really, just get whatever you can find at the store. I know Scott's has a few, I know Bayer Advanced has a few, I know Specticide has one, Ortho all of them. Just get whatever's cheap and get whatever's labeled to kill grub worms and you should be fine. Just keep in mind that the grub control you are looking for will be season long control because I do know that there are some deceiving labels out there. For example, you see this Spectricide product? You see how on one side of the bag it says kills on contact and on the other side of the bag it says season long control. But look at the small print on there. Season long control only works against ants. It will kill on contact. It'll kill grub, chitch bugs, sod webworm, all those concerns we have during the summer. You'll be all right, but season long control, it's not gonna work for that. It only works on ants according to the label. So that's the only piece of criteria I have for those of you guys who are selecting grub control. Make sure it's season long so it'll protect you for the rest of the season and you don't have to reapply. Real quick, I want to address what I chose and why. So I went ahead and I just chose Old Fashioned 7, mainly because it's readily available and it's affordable. 
The active ingredient is carbile, which is a low toxicity insecticide, which is again going to get our job done on eliminating the grub worms, but at the same time not be in high enough toxicity rates that it'll be toxic to the public, which in this case is their family and pets that want to play on the lawn. Last thing we're going to talk about is how to actually apply the grub preventer. First thing we need to figure out is how much our bag covers. Again, a good reason to measure your lawn and see what you're up against before taking further action. So we know from previous videos that my lawn is just under 5,000 square feet and this bag of seven covers just under 4,300 square feet. Now because I have a little more lawn area than this bag can cover then I'll need to reduce the rate by at least less than a quarter to ensure even coverage across the entire lawn. This is where spreader settings come into play. This is my Scott's Turf Builder spreader here and this is what we're going to use to demonstrate and this is actually what I used to apply the product. So what you got to do whenever you're applying a grub preventer or really any product including fertilizer is you got to kind of visualize the entire area that you have to do and as you walk across your area you just got to kind of visualize how fast the product is falling out as you walk across your area because then you got to remind yourself okay I have about 5,000 square feet to deal with out here and I only have a bag that covers less than that so I have to figure out how I can make it work so what you got to do is you just got to kind of finagle with your spreader settings a little bit I recommend you start at the lowest setting see how much comes out and if you feel hmm, maybe that's not fast enough bump it up a little bit and if that's not working for you maybe bump it up a little bit more or if it's coming out too fast just adjust it a little bit more you see it's all about just visualizing the entire area you have to do and just making sure that you get that area covered evenly. That's a great way to start right there, but I'm not telling you that you should do this with one bag if you have anything bigger than 5,000 square feet or anything way out of the charts of what your bag covers. You might want to consider getting a second bag because it's always better to get down the full rate if you can, but in my case I wasn't able to, but I was able to get close to it just by doing a little bit calibration with my spreader here. All right, just one last thing for those of you who are using a product like Seven, which has a three month residual. Even though you'll have coverage, you're not going to have as good a coverage on the third month as you do in the first two months. What I recommend is apply in June as I addressed in the video and apply again in late August to maintain the proper coverage as we approach the end of the feeding season, which is usually in September. So after application, I was sure to water within a few days. Again, you want to do that. You don't want these granules to sit here and degrade. You want to water them at least three to four days after application at the latest. And if you do that, you should be just fine and all set throughout the grub feeding season and you don't have any problems to worry about throughout the fall. And with that, I'm Jake the Long Kid. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. One thing I forgot to mention here in the edit is why am I applying morganite at a lower rate than normal? Well, the reason is when I was applying that day, the lawn was under a little bit of stress, mainly from lack of rain and a lot of heat. Again, it's the typical summers here in Indiana. They're not so rainy. We're starting to get lucky now. We're getting some rain, so the yard is staying green. So that tells me that I can go ahead and just throw her down on my next application. But at that point, I wanted to relieve some of the stress on the lawn a little bit. I didn't want to push it too hard. So anytime you use your fertilizer and you have control of your end rates and you can back them down a little bit, that's a great idea.